In this video, we're starting off with the exponential function by revising what you did in grade 10. The standard form for the equation of an exponential function is y is equal to a times b to the power of x plus p plus q. And in grade 10, we focused on what the a, the b, and the q value indicates. As usual, we start with the mother graph, in which the a value is 1, the b value 2, and the q value 0. The b value of 2 forms an increasing graph. As this b value increases, the bar bends more and becomes steeper. When the b value is equal to 1, the graph forms a straight line, so b can never be equal to 1. When the b value is smaller than 1, the graph will be decreasing. This b value can also never be negative, because then the function will not form an exponential graph. So, a b value between 0 and 1 indicates that the graph will be decreasing, and a b value bigger than 1 will be an increasing graph. The sign of the a value, just like with any graph, indicates a reflection around the x-axis. So, at the moment, the a value is positive and we have our increasing graph. But when we change it to a negative value, you can see the reflection over the x-axis happening. The size of the a value indicates how steep the graph is. Even though the influence of a and b looks similar, the b value will bend the graph more and the a value will stretch it vertically. Lastly, we're going to focus on the influence of the Q value. And just like with all the other graphs, it indicates the vertical translation. But first, you need to remember that an exponential graph also has one asymptote. It has a horizontal asymptote, which at the moment is at y is equal to zero. This horizontal asymptote, along with the function, will move up or down as soon as a Q value is added. An exponential function is not symmetrical and will not have an axis of symmetry. So to sum up, the b value indicates whether the graph is decreasing if b is between 0 and 1, or increasing if b is bigger than 1. The q value still indicates the vertical translation, and when the q value is bigger than 0, the graph moves up, and smaller than 0, it moves down. An exponential function has one asymptote, and that is a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to q. Lastly, the sign of the a value indicates whether there was a reflection around the x-axis or not. If a is bigger than 0, there was no reflection, and the function will lie above its asymptote. If the a value is negative, a reflection has taken place and the function will now be below its asymptote. For any exponential function, you should be able to identify the following. Firstly, the x-intercept, which in our example's case is given as minus 1, 0. And then also the y-intercept, which here is 0, minus 1 then you also need to be able to identify the one horizontal asymptote, and in our example, that is y is equal to minus 2. Just like a hyperbola, an exponential function does not have a turning point, which means it will either be increasing or decreasing right through. In our example's case, the graph moves down from left to right, and that means it is decreasing for all x values. For the domain, we determine what x values will form part of this graph by reading from left to right. And in this case, all x values are part of an exponential function. For the range, we determine the y values by reading from bottom to top, and you will see that this graph only lies above its asymptote, and that means for all y values bigger than that asymptote of minus 2. Let's go and sketch an exponential function. Sketch the following function 
and indicate the intercepts with the axes and asymptote. If I start off by getting a rough idea of the sketch, I will have a look at the Q value, which gives me my horizontal asymptote at Y is equal to minus 4. Next, if we have a look at the B value of a half, which is smaller than 1, I know that this will be a decreasing graph, and clearly now I'll have to determine an X as well as a Y intercept. For the Y intercept, I'm going to substitute the X value with 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1, so the Y intercept is at minus 3. For the X intercept, I'm going to substitute the Y value in the equation with a 0, and now I need to solve the X in the exponent. So firstly, I'm going to add the minus 4 on the left, and now to solve the x in the exponent, I need to get the bases the same. To do that, I'm going to write both of them in prime numbers, so the left will be 2 to the power of 2, and on the right I have 2 to the power of minus 1. This means that minus x is equal to 2, which means that x is equal to minus 2. So when I now go to draw this graph, I start off with my asymptote, which is at y is equal to minus 4. I know that this graph is decreasing with a negative x and negative y intercept, and the x intercept is minus 2, 0, and the y intercept 0, minus 3. If you feel that you need more revision on the grade 10 exponential function, you can go and watch the grade 10 videos on this topic.